I'm Megan Simmons, and I got next. You next up, and you ain't been on sports like talk. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> hey, you better hit him up. Look, you breaking next, you up next. Keep the wins on hard. Rise the star on the big scene. Make them know who you are. You don't break a sweat. Don't set up for less. They put you through that test. Your resume that flex. Who got next? Who got next? SLT, first they go. Who got next? Who got next? Living my dreams and all your goals. Who got next? Who got next? You can ask B. Jones or head coach. Who got next? Who got next? You next up, so here's my vote. Shit. Yeah, let that beat ride a little bit longer, KT. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Sports Life Talks. You got next, a platform that gives exposure to the voices of tomorrow, real people, real conversations, real stories of amazing human beings doing phenomenal things and accomplishing big dreams. And ladies and gentlemen, oh my goodness. 2022 has been amazing already but when i tell y'all this journey that we are taking with you guys are growing the momentum is growing we getting some we getting some monsters on this show and today i gotta send a special shout out to all my university of tennessee alumni that has graced the presence of this show because y'all have showed up and y'all have showed out but today we got miss simmons in the building professional ball player hooper extraordinaire (laughs) hey ain't nothing she can't do with that rock Represent Texas, represent North Carolina. Hey, you doing big things, sis. How you doing today? Man, I'm doing amazing. I ain't got no complaints. I, I can tell. I can tell. You came on this afternoon. You was like, hey, you a smile from here to here. I already knew right there who we had and I already knew what type of person you is. But if you, in case you don't know by now already, I am your host, the mouth of the South, B. Jones, <laughs> the Louisiana Mr. Yeet himself. I'm rocking alongside the guru. The architect, my partner in crime, the head coach KT. How you doing, coach? Man, I'm thinking I may have to stop rooting for Florida and start rooting for Tennessee. B. Jones, it's getting <laughs> serious up in here, man. That cream stick launch stuff might look good on me for a just, second, man. Switch over, just. Go ahead and switch over. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it may be hard, but I'm thinking about it, though. I'm thinking about it. <laughs> now, Kevin, I hate to do this to you early in the show. You know you're my brother from another mother. No, I'm not playing her one-on-one. I know you're not. <laughs> you, but you ain't been talking. M- Megan, let me tell you something. We, 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 get, we get a lot of athletes, and, and we, have, we have made it our mission to make sure we tell the women's journey because what you, what you ladies are doing is so important. We, we've debated with numerous people on our show, Wednesday night, 8 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time, streaming. <laughs> on Facebook and YouTube. We've debated with people why the WNBA and the females game needs more exposure because we all in on it. But Kevin right. typically, before show, Kevin will kind of start sticking his chest out. He'll, he'll start tightening up Nikes and stuff. He'll start acting like, I can get buckets. I can do something. You know, you know I, I, I could probably still play and, and play them to 12. He ain't talked at this time, Speedy. He ain't talked at this time, Speedy. He ain't want none of that smoke. Hey, you don't want none of this over here. No, wait, wait, hold up. Before he, before we go <laughs> on, B. Jones, when was the last time I talked noise to anybody in this series? After you got, after the girl from Texas, from Houston, we had the, the All American from Houston come on the show. You were like, hey, I'm, done, I'm done with challenges. Hey, Le- uh, Layla Blair. <laughs> Layla Blair said she'd get buckets on you. I don't think you been wolfing since then. Man, no. <laughs> but you, remember, we got a game next month, two on two against the people because of you running your mouth. Hey, I am the mouth of the South. Well, check this out. If this is your first time joining the show, we want to say thank you so much. And we got a small little favor to ask for you. On the count of three, Sports Life Talk Nation, our new family members, our new friends, we need you to smash that subscribe button so we can keep going out and finding the Megan Simmons of the world. So we can keep finding these amazing, talented people who got a story to tell. So here we go. You ready, Megan? Your people ready? They locked in? I'm ready. All right, let's go. I'm One. ready. Two, three, boom. Hey, well, listen, if you did smash that subscribe button, we got over 150 episodes of You Got Next right now in our archives. And and we just want to say welcome to the family. Enjoy this journey. Lock in with us. Tap in because we're doing amazing things and we can't do it without you. All right, Megan. So your story. Somebody need to hear this story, Megan. 
Somebody need to hear how dope, how phenomenal. Because I saw the package. I saw, I saw the highlights. <laughs> I, 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 I've done the research. But these people out there, they 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 <laughs> sat down and took the time to be blessed like I did, right? So so let's tell them right. your story. But we got to start out before we can, before we can tell them how you got where you are and where you're going. We got we to gotta take you through the Sports Life Talk Initiation. Are you ready for this? I'm ready. Let's go. All right, let's go. Let's get it. All right, to initiate you into the SLT family, you got to give us your top five music artists. Top five. Uh, top of the top. I love Alicia Keys, NDRE, Jill Scott, Erica Badu, and her. Yeah, that was dope. I like that top five. That was rapid fire. That was nothing but heat. So any comments? <laughs> any comments? Hey, so, hey y'all so notice I didn't give y'all no men. I didn't give y'all you no men. I gave y'all all women. All and women. I'm- now, I I have found myself my wife she she's she's a big her fan and she so she been playing it and like one day she like put her radio on YouTube and and they like played all of her music I I am just like I'm crazy about her music she is dope she is super dope oh yeah for and sure I can sit for up sure. there and just listen to her tracks her artistry her creativity her talent is crazy so shout out to That's her crazy. Come be on you got next, sir. <laughs> hey, not only listen to all of her top five, I wouldn't mind looking at them all day either, B. Jones, but that's another yeah. story. All you right. know what? That's another story for somebody else, okay? <laughs> yeah. It's not your story, but it's my story. I love looking at women. All right, so what are some of your favorite sports teams? Sports teams? Um, I actually like the Warriors. I like the Warriors, um, too. I used, I used to like the Spurs when Tim Duncan and Tony Parker and Manu was there. That's a great um, team. I like to watch. I like to watch Dallas, Chicago. Mavericks. I can watch the Mavericks. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can watch the Bulls. Uh, their team is pretty good. And then also, I like the Memphis Grizzlies. I like the Grizzlies. Ooh, I like. I like her teams too, man. I like yeah. her team. Yeah, especially when she For said sure. Dallas, man. That was like that. That made my day. Oh yeah, Dallas. Yeah. Dallas. Dallas. Hey, there ain't nothing you can do. You know, Kevin. I didn't know you was a big Mavericks fan like that. Hey, Jones, stop playing. You know, good and wear a lot of them. Learn something new. No, no, I mean, like, <laughs> thank you for exposing him. He's messy. He know I like the Mavericks. All right, so who is your favorite superhero and why? Uh, superhero. Uh, I would have to say Wonder Woman uh, for the simple fact that she's very versatile. She's aggressive, but very soft. And I think that that actually represents who I am. Like on the court, I'm very aggressive, but off the court, there's a different there's a different side of me. Off the court. Okay, so Diana Prince, since every good superhero needs their own theme music, what would your theme song be? Theme song? Uh, I would have to say "I'm Every Woman" by Whitney Houston. I'm every woman. <laughs> <laughs> me. Hey, I'm gonna need you to clear your throat. Clear your throat. Go ahead, clear. Your my throat. bad. I need to let that little bass in there. Yeah, you tried. Hey, that's one I of like, them. Hey, that's you tried. That's it. That's <laughs> hey, Whitney. That was Whitney. That's a okay, Whitney. Time, but Whitney doubled up on that song. Yeah, she Whitney doubled up. Doubled. Okay, okay. The, the best vocalist of all time, Whitney Houston. Hands down. Hands the down. Best, uh, it's no debate. Versus the best verses was Shaka Khan, though. So <laughs> now you do. That's it. true. But hey, she's Whitney Houston is on the top of my list of artists too. I didn't name her, but I, I love. She, she's on a different level. We already know. Oh yeah, she, yeah. we don't put. I don't put her in that top five category. She's yeah. in her own. Yeah, like like Whitney, Michael yeah. Jackson, they Luke, don't, they don't, they don't, yeah, they over there the top five because they they are already grails. They grails yeah, they, <laughs> over they, there. They, they extra <laughs> threat, They stars. They intellect. They they, they planets on their own. They don't belong to nobody. In the top five. Top five is for folks who actually we got a debate about. So yeah, no, nah, I'm right. with you. I'm glad right. we're all in agreement, B. Jones. For once, we agree on something, man. I'm proud of you, brother. <sighs> Move on. <laughs> yeah, you're not lying. All right, B. Jones. I think it's safe to say that Speedy. Is in the family, so go ahead and take it away, man. Speedy, if you and Kevin were to play two twelve by one, <laughs> what would the score be? What would the score be? Just I would, would, I would, would say, I would say twelve to ten. No, so, you gonna get, you gonna let him get ten points. The only reason why I say that because a man's mind is to just be aggressive and take it to the post instead of trying to be versatile. So I give it to him there, but after a while, it's just it's gonna be a wrap. He gonna get tired. Hey, well, I'm glad you talked a while. What are you talking about? <laughs> I got about 14 years on you, so this is how it's going to be. It probably 
12 to 5. I was about to say 12 3. I'm going to say 12 3, Speedy. It ain't even going to be close. Hey, he might get lucky. He might get some lucky shots. That's why I'm giving it to him. But you know what? We'll never find out because I'm not playing against you. You ain't got to worry about that. When are you coming back home, Speedy? When are you coming Um, back to Texas? I don't know just yet. Uh, we're trying to figure out our playoff situation now. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, we move up in the rankings maybe late April. First, okay. we come back. Mm-hmm. Right, we're going we're to we're talk about that, but let's let's start off. So, so I kind of find it interesting, especially when like when I hear somebody went to the University of Tennessee. That's like a dynasty. That's like the the orange machine. And and ever since I was a little kid, Tennessee has been win, win, win. Like they was like they was a a, a, a DJ Khaled song. You know what I'm saying? No right. matter what. <laughs> ever since right. I, ever since I was little, I ain't know no other way. The names that have come across come out of that organization. And what's crazy is when I started looking at like the top ten and the top five scores and all of this stuff and then I like see your name and I was like, whoa, like like that's that's just like crazy, but but I I say all of that just because to come up and go to the University of Tennessee, you you wasn't no weak you, you was you was real from day one you were real. So when did when did you when did you fall in love with basketball? Um, I fell in love at the age of six, uh, growing wow. up and watching my brothers play, um, and then my dad was in the military and he played basketball like in his off time. So growing up and watching my dad play, he was really good. Um, and I took, you know, heed to what he was doing and I was inspired by it. Like I wanted to be as good as him or even better than him and my brothers. And that just motivated me to just keep pushing and, and work hard to get past that. Now, now your brother, one of your brothers played at Oklahoma state and his name is Ryan Simmons, right? Did he ever go play for the, the Indianapolis Colts? No, he got drafted by Seattle. Seattle. Okay. And he got injured. And then after that, he just. No, I remember Stop. him being drafted though. I just couldn't remember what team. I, I remember. Yeah, him it being was drafted. Seattle. It was yeah, Seattle. Okay. Okay. All right. And right now he's working. He's actually a uh, one of the recruiters. He's an intern for the recruiters for the Seattle Seahawks right now. Whoa! God, dog. So, so when you said you came from a family of athletes, you were being one hundred percent. On, on your bios oh. and stuff like that when you say you come from a family of sports now did, did that add any pressure to you coming up like hey you knew you had to be great or I had to work a little bit harder because failure was not an option Um, I think the fact that a lot of the people who made it to the professional level in my family were men uh-huh. to be the first woman in my family to be at the professional level for me it wasn't pressure it was just more motivation that I could even be that woman in our family to be the first one at the professional level. So it really was no pressure. It was just complete motivation for me. Well, man, I, I got so much I want to cover. I'm like a fan right now. Sports like talk nation. <laughs> I'm a fan too. I love sports. I love these stories. Right. And I challenge everybody to go to uh, Meg Simmons 3 and to really put a name in the Google and just learn more about her because there's no way I could cover it all in 30 minutes. But right. I, I want to start with the draft night. And I know, I know, I know we want to talk about Tennessee. Everybody want to talk about Tennessee right. and past Summit and Isabel. You you played on the dope squad. But I, I got to talk about the draft night because that part yeah. of sto- your story, uh, it moved me to tears. I'm gonna be honest with you. I had, I, I was like, hey, you know, I'm not crying. You know, I'm, I'm, I got allergies. Right. You know? it was <laughs> yeah, that kind right. of thing. But when your name got called, your dad was there. It was like it was to me. It kind of was like the beginning of, of like the WNBA. But but it, yeah, you could. I kind of saw the evolution of the WNBA from the Mohegan Sun Hotel to where where these guys are now. And it, it was just crazy. It was just crazy. But what what was that night like for you? And what was that experience like to hear your name called? Um. For me, I did. it didn't show it. If you ever go on YouTube and you look at the rerun of when I got drafted and was able to walk on the stage, I was emotional, but I didn't want to be too emotional that it showed on TV. You know, it was yeah. so much to take in in the moment that I didn't know really what happened. I knew that that was a dream of mine and the fact that it happened, I already knew that for me, it was already preordained for me to get there. Right. The right. fact that I got there, it was unbelievable for me. It was hard to take in in the moment, but once I finally, maybe after a week or so, when it happened, I was just like, man, I really manifested this as a child. I fulfilled that dream. And I was still able to embrace it even more at the fact that my family was there. Yeah. You know, even though, you know, my coach, like Pat wasn't there and anything, I still felt, you know, every emotion in that moment. I just didn't express it the way that people expected me you, to. You handled it like a G. 
when, when, when I saw that, I was like, yeah, she she was meant for this. She was meant for greatness because your, your, your polish and your pedigree right there, you were like, hey, it's time to go to work. To, to me, I kind of yeah. felt like that's when they, like the light switch came on, which is something like that. But but let's rewind this thing because I, I can't keep dropping the past summit bomb and people not, people not <laughs> ask. She's the GOAT, right? We typically, right. I remember when me and Kevin first started doing WNBA players, we were like, hey, tell us tell us who your favorite coaches are. Uh, excuse me, when we was doing the, the, the coaches, we'd be like, what, what coaches inspire you in? It's it's like on the Mount Rushmore coaches. Now, not only not only did you get the opportunity to to be coached by Amita, but like she gave you your nickname. That like Speedy came from a legend. Like, mm-hmm. t- tell us about your interactions with Coach Summit and how much she meant to you in your career. Let's put it like this: Pat Summit didn't give me the name Speedy. Okay, okay. she just she didn't she give me pop. that. There is a legend before her that really? gave me that name. Okay. So if y'all don't know who that is, it's Clarissa Davis Wrightsill. She played at the University of Texas. She actually played in the league before the WNBA ever became what it is now. Wow. She gave me that nickname. And it was only after that when I was recruited by Pat in Tennessee that Pat continued that name. So it was magnified when Pat started calling me that. But that's where it started. It started when I was in the eighth grade. And that's where I got that name from. It was it is from Clarissa Davis right too. I tell you what, so shout out to Clarissa because once I saw you play, I mean, I don't I don't know what the stopwatch say, but I swear you got that ball down that court. <laughs> In about three, like, like if we if we down by by two points and we we ain't got no time out, we got to go the full length of the court. Hand that ball to twenty. Oh, <laughs> back then it was right. ten. It was ten when I saw you hooping. Hand that ball to ten so she can get that thing up the court. Yeah, and B Jones, you want me to play against her? Yeah, <laughs> come on, man. You doing too much. Hey, listen. But I will say, I will say, my experience with Pat for the two years that. I actually got to embrace her before, you know, it switched over to Holly. I can say she was, and I always tell people this when people ask me about her, she was a second mom. She was my mom away from my mom. There was nothing that she could have told me that I knew wasn't true or it wasn't right for me to know. I just knew it. Everything that she said, I trusted her enough that anything she told me, I I believed it. But then she trusted me enough to do with whatever she told me, she knew I was gonna magnify it by my actions and the way that I played. So for me, we actually had a a great relationship within the first two years, Um, even after her situation, you know, with her dementia and things like that, it actually made her remember me more, that it was easier for her to talk to me. She always remembered who I was. Mm. You know, just being around her, it always, she always remembered who I was. And people will never understand when people see her glare, people see her eyes and they're like, oh, she's like so aggressive. But in reality, that aggression was just in her forte, which was the court. Off the court, them eyes was a completely different color. You saw gray, you saw green sometimes. It was dependent on her mood. But on the court, it was just completely different. Completely That's different. crazy. That's crazy. Now, I'm going to rattle off some success here. You were a honorable mention All-American third team All-American, second team All-SEC, SEC newcomer of the year. Like, when you got to Tennessee, you went you went bam, bam. I mean, you went big bang. <laughs> you came out the gate balling on them. I think your senior year, you had, what, 16.5 points a game. You played, against, you played with and against some amazing names, right? So uh, tell us a little bit about what it meant for you to wear that orange and, and do your thing out there at the University of Tennessee. Uh, you know, when people say Lady Vaughn for life, that is, there is nothing I can change about that. And I can say that I genuinely bleed orange. Like I support the girls now. And even though the game is different, there still is a level of respect for that program because that's where I came from. If I didn't, if I didn't come from some, a place like that, I don't think that I would be the woman that I am today without the you know, the work ethic, how they pushed us out of our comfort zone from playing under Pat um, to the interviews, teaching us how to communicate with people, our education, all of that hands down. I feel like it was, you know, as I said, it was God ordained for me to be there, embrace Pat when she was there, have the ups and downs that I had and still be successful as I am now. Well, I tell you what, Kevin, I know you probably didn't didn't read this, but she joined the ranks. Well, these, these are the names, Kevin. Holmesclaw, Gordon, Parker, Catchings. Like, 
y'all might not have known Simmons, but cuz she been she been dealing and doing big things now. Now where are you? Well, now you just mentioned you kind of teased us up at the beginning of the show. You talked about making it to the playoffs and stuff like that. Now where are you hoping at right now, Megan? Um, I'm in Turkey right now. I play for the club Besiktas right now. Gotcha, gotcha. And and I I was able to to watch a little bit of a game you had posted in your uh in your link. I saw you out there uh, doing your thing. Uh, t- tell us what it, what is what is it like playing in the overseas game for you, man? What, what, how, how has that been impactful, or how have you been able to take advantage of that to to keep yourself in great shape and you know what I mean? Keep keep your mind on focused on the game of basketball. Yeah, I mean it's been a roller coaster. I mean it's being playing overseas is not for everybody. To be honest, if you are not mentally tough, if you are not, you know, goal oriented, if you are not confident or resilient, you will never be able to succeed in overseas basketball. And I try to even, you know, after basketball, even coaching younger girls, that's what I would tell them, because it's really not for everybody. I mean, it's something that you have to really have a heart for. You have to yearn to want to be successful. You have to yearn to want to impact everybody else. You have to yearn to build your character as you go. Everything is not going to be, you know, easy peasy. It's not. There's going to be a lot of people that doubt you. I've had that since my first year overseas. I'm not the biggest. I'm not the tallest. But my heart is big and people see that. And that's the only reason why I've had the opportunities that I've had is just to be able to express my love for the game with my heart. And that's it. That's awesome. Now you also pretty smart. So you talk about your heart. We we bragged on your versatility on the court. We know how dope you are on the court. But you're super smart. You a psychology major. How do you use that psychology in, in as an advantage of being a ball player? Like, do you you be out there getting in folks' heads, or you be trying to do some some juju on your teammates to help <laughs> elevate them to the next level? I mean, do, how do you use that that psychology? Um, to be honest, it's it's an indirect type of indirect interaction to be honest and it's hard not to use it but it sometimes it just happens especially when you have teammates who are not confident in themselves you kind of figure out based on their actions and how they interact with you and I can say even with my teammates here it's easy for me to to understand okay hey they might be going through something so maybe they need a hug which in return before the game it motivates them to play harder because there's somebody that's there that supports them that cares for them that loves them it's a different it's a different mentality um, but i try not to use that too much to where that turns into my own burden and i carry on everybody else's i don't want to have to do that so i try to stick with my own mental psychology and learn more about myself the more i learn about myself the more i'm able to understand other people and interact with them differently all right, hey, Kevin, I, I got one question before you go. Well, oh, go you know, I'll ask it later. No, I'll ask it later, Kevin. Go, go, go. No, ahead. go ahead, man. Do it now. Well, I just, I just want to know, because, I mean, what, what is your sneaker? I'm a sneaker head. I'm always, I'm always curious about the sneaker. What, what is your go-to sneaker? Like, do you have, do you have a favorite pair of sneakers? Some, some J's? I, to be Levi's? honest, I love Jordan 4s and Jordan 1s. Ooh, see, we can't folk. We can't folk. Yeah, I, I love, and I also love the 11s. I love Jordan 11s. The 4s. I love the 11s. <sighs> Best, yeah, best my best. collection is is mostly of that. Yes, God, I can't wait. We're going to outline. We're going to we're going to dig yeah, through. We really are. I think what starting in November, B. Jones, I probably bothered what about twelve pair of ones. Yeah, we've been ridiculous with it, Megan. Yeah. Somebody need to tell us. <laughs> somebody, <laughs> need, said, somebody need to take my car from me. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. All right. So speaking of teammates, we had another Tennessee alum on Drea Carter. Okay. So can you, tell us a little bit of, can you tell us a little bit about the time that you spent with her in Tennessee? Listen, if people don't know, let's make this crystal clear. Andrea Carter is who I call my baby. She is, when I say she is a little sister that I've, I could have ever asked for, to be honest. She was one of those teammates that y'all thought I was fast. She was just up there with me. It really? was always a challenge. And I think the love that I have for her and especially where she is now, I see her in a completely different light. I respect her more because now, Drea wasn't one to always talk and be in front of the camera. She was a little shy every now and then, but to see her now, I'm like, listen, you motivate me even more for me to even possibly step into something as that. And the way that she's motivating younger women and for her to believe like as a black woman you can be just as strong you can be just as feminine you can speak 
intellectual like you can have intellectual speaking all of that it's 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 powerful to me and i and i think that my time with her was it was short but when i see her it's like we never missed a beat Shout out to Drea because she came on here. Shout out to Drea. We never thought in a million years we could have got her on the show. Are you? Are <laughs> oh yeah, I was about to say. Are Casey Listen, and y'all gonna get some more people too. <laughs> oh no! Don't you don't you speak that on us? Don't you speak that blessing on us, Maggie? <laughs> All right, Maggie. I got one more question to ask you before we go to our championship rounds. And you've been around the block. You're a student of the game. So, right. what is something that basketball has taught you that you can use when you're not on the court? Um, be kind. You never know what somebody is going through um, because every basketball player has something that they're dealing with off the court. You never know what somebody's mm. dealing with. Your character speaks more volume than what you do as your job. Mm. No matter what the situation is, no matter how bad it is, your character speaks more volume than what you could ever do or represent for any other club, any other person, your, your family name. It doesn't matter. Your character, your personality will always speak volume. Mm, man, they doing something right at the University of Tennessee. Can you? <laughs> hey, you know what I'm saying, man? Hey, they you doing something seriously. right. Dude. Yeah. Megan, at- since we got March Madness going on right now, and this is a quick question, because I, I mean, I'm, I'm telling y'all I could do this for the next hour if, yeah, if, okay. if, I, if, if I was blessed <laughs> with it. Uh, yeah. Listen, I'm, I, I'm curious. How difficult it is it to go through an SEC regular schedule, an SEC tournament, and then get into that postseason and try to try to do this whole thing. Because to me, this is the most difficult tournament, to, the difficult route to win a championship of all sports. There is right. no other sport that I, th- I think is comparable to what a college athlete has to go through, a college basketball athlete has to go through. How difficult right. is that, in your opinion? It was, it, for I can say it from my experience, because I can't speak for it now. Uh, but at the time, the players that we had in my class, it was way, it was really competitive. It was hard. But I think because we were always challenged every single day, the time it came to the to the to the NCAA tournament, it was even more difficult. Going through the SEC, of course, Tennessee. You got Tennessee, Texas A and M, LSU. We were always the strongest, and they were coming for y'all, and they were coming for y'all. Always, always. (laughs) It, it never fails. But when it came down to what was important, that challenged us for those teams that were the underdog. You know, mentally, we had to understand, okay, yeah, we know we're better than them, but we know that at any point in time, they can cut our run short. Yep. But it was really difficult. I say now, especially with the game, how the game has changed now, anybody can show up. Yep. Anybody. You got maybe one or two players that might be random on a team, and you'd be like, man, I, I didn't expect that. But you you have to expect random. You you have to. There's At any point in time, you could be your, your trip could be cut short. That's crazy. That's crazy. All right, Kevin, you ready to go to work, sir? Are you ready to go to work? Because uh, she'll beat you 12 to 3, but I'm about to whoop that head myself. Oh. Coach, I mean, uh, Megan Simmons, welcome to the championship rounds. This is the part of the show where Kevin and I, we go tit for tat, we compete, and you are now officially calling all the shots. Have you ever played a game called Would You Rather before? I have. All right, so the rules are very simple. Both hosts will present to you an option. You select one of those options. That host will gain a point. The first host to get two points or the best out of three will win this episode's game of championship rounds. And for those of you who are keeping up, Kevin got a belt at his house somewhere. (laughs) What I'm coming for. Kevin is a season one champion, Megan. But 2022 is going to bring something blessed for the the mouth of the South fans. But those of you who rock with me, we're going to take that thing this year. It was going to be hard. It's going to be difficult, but we are on our way. Now, right now, the score, Megan, is 19, <laughs> it's 19 to 17. Kevin has a lead, but <laughs> I have won the last three games, and I've also won the last four out of five games. So I won four out of five, but I'm on a three-game win streak, and I'm feeling pretty good. I'm, fe- I'm, I'm, feeling, I'm feeling pretty good because I got you, Megan. I got my <laughs> In the building, I already know that we about to have some blessings. We about to be blessed, oh blessed, oh blessed. Because all I do is win, win. Oh, win. you get to the questions. Good grief! <laughs> I gotta enjoy this. <laughs> see, see, that's, hey, Megan, see that, that's psychology. You see the psychology, Megan? Oh, I got I psychology. Psychology. Now you triggering him. Now you triggering him. That ain't positive psychology. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we, all right. Here we go. Round number one. Would you rather win five WNBA championships? But only get three million a year during that run, or 
Would you rather never win a championship but get $30 million a year? Mm. I would rather get five WBA championships with $3 million a year. Money, money, money. Five of them. That's what... Did I do <laughs> five? Oh, no. I probably... I guess probably what? owe the you one more. After the resume, the resume of five WBA championships, the money comes out. Oh, I'm starting to heat up. I'm starting to heat up. Here we go. Round number two. Round number two. Here we go. All right, Megan Simmons. Would you rather have an award named after you? The Megan Simmons Award or the Megan Simmons Trophy? Something named after you. Or would you rather have a shoe made by Nike named after you? An award named after me. Yeah, somebody pop the champagne, let the confetti <laughs> fall from the rafters. That's officially a game. That's officially a game, ladies and gentlemen. And now, <laughs> it's 1918, Kevin. It's 1918. I can count. I get it. 1918. Let's I'm do the last question. Only as a professional courtesy to you, sir. I'm going to finish this last question because Megan is super dope and she deserved the last question. All right. So, Megan, would you rather be hated on for not being loyal to a team, but you win three championships, right? So, you are part of a championship team for three team, three three different championship runs, but you transferred from city to city. You know how the free agency market goes. You made the decision, but now you're the bad guy or... Would you rather be loyal to a team, win one championship, and become a legend in that city? I'd rather win one championship and become a legend in that city. Oh, thank you for picking one of mine. I really appreciate that. I just didn't want to get swept this joke. <laughs> I don't Steph mind Curry. losing. You, you pick Steph Curry over LeBron? LeBron has won. And LeBron has won. He's hated, but he went to every city and won. Let's put it like this. Regardless of whatever city that you go to, yeah, it's a good impact, but there is somebody else named Kobe Bryant that did it. <laughs> And he had more championships. Hey, Kobe, that's a good one. All right. Yeah. And wait, and you see what I'm you. saying? It's yeah, multiple yeah. championships in one place. That's Michael right. Jordan, it, one place until later on in his I career. like it. I like it. it. But you also brought up Steph Curry, and then look, KD went there, and they still love Curry more than they loved him. Hello? Yeah. Yeah, we we gonna talk about that Wednesday night at eight o'clock. We <laughs> have such a standing time, y'all can rock with us because I got some Kevin Durant opinions that oh, I'm dropping this Wednesday night. night. I promise y'all, I got some. But Kevin, let's not lose the subject. Let's not lose focus okay, on. It's 1918. You won, sir. Gracias. Yeah, yeah. All that. Great job. When you talk about the best, baby. No, I not He's not humble yeah. when he wins. That's why I can't uh, talk. Uh, uh, you see the finger roll? Yeah. Yeah. Finger roll in it. And one. Yeah. <laughs> and one. Hey, I'm if just, you won, listen, Kevin, if you won, I would have done the same thing to you. Respect oh, I've act, 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 acted the fool too. So don't get, <laughs> don't get it twisted. I've acted the fool. He got the belt at his house right now. Yeah, it's right here. I ain't pull it up. He would have won. It would have been disgusting. Right on this shoulder right here too. It would have been disgusting. All right. But the title of the show is You Got Next, Speedy. All right. And we already can tell your energy's crazy. You, we are we we've seen the footage, so we know that you were monster on the court. What is the what does the near future hold for you? Um, I would have to say the fact that I want to be a mom. Oh. That, that is a part of my future, and um, I want to be able to coach like in the NBA. That's a dream of mine is to be a part of skill development in the NBA for sure. And and that's that's like we we seeing people come before you right now that's doing that every day. I, I guess I'm being a little bit too exaggerated, but we we're seeing it more often, right? It's becoming right. more prevalent that that opportunity has been given that, and uh, definitely definitely can fulfill that. So I, I don't think we've ever heard the mom one before, have we, Kevin? Has anybody ever said, "Hey, you know, in my near future, I want to become a parent"? They, they have said that. It's been a couple of really? years. Well, yeah. I commend that. I commend that because we just bought a puppy at Christmas, and it, it's you know hell. what? It is. <laughs> so I'm. I'm gonna pray for you. I'm gonna pray for you with a new baby because <laughs> man, if I gotta get up at five o'clock again. Hey, I got eleven and listen, I got eleven nieces and nephews that I've done like this, so it's not a problem. Oh yeah, so you was grown for that. You was born for that. All right. Yeah, so you ready. Yeah. So before we go on, if you have two little boys, name one of them Kevin and the other one Brandon. That's all we have. <laughs> I'm just saying it, it At least give him the nickname KB You know what I'm saying Yeah, yeah KB KB Yeah KB There we go Listen I'm so done with y'all I'm so done with y'all <laughs> <I'll be laughs> It's a wrap, wrap. wrap. <laughs> Alright so uh, Besides Instagram Where can people find you On social media 
Um, I have the Twitter at Megan Simmons, and that's pretty much it. Snapchat, I don't get on. So, yeah, we don't get on Snapchat. Yeah, so Instagram and, and Twitter, that's it. All right, so do you have any shout outs that you want to give? Um, shout out to my best friend, uh, CEO, Akiva Bethel. Yes. She's the one that got me connected yeah. with you. Yeah, she's the one that nominated you. Oh, yeah. so this, uh, wait, this is a nomination show. I love nomination shows. Yeah, that's, yeah. That, is my, that is one of my best friends. And uh, shout out to her because she's just as inspirational as y'all think I am, especially because of the fact that, you know, now she has her own league and things like that. It's inspirational. And I love being connected to people who are trying to take the next step for the next generation. So I appreciate her for sure. Yeah, Keela's dope. Will you be at the league? Or are you going to go check it out? Oh, I was there last year. You gonna play? You hoping? Oh yeah, I played last year. I would, I would definitely be playing this year for sure. Are you uh, now? Now I'm gonna be honest with you. Are you and Akila gonna be on the same team? Oh yeah, we was on the same team last year. We won the championship. Oh, it, y'all might as well not even. <laughs> 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 hey, they, they might as well not even play this thing. Oh, that oh is a God. problem. Yeah. Oh my it goodness! Was, hey, it was competitive last. It was competitive last year, but I think this year she's gonna have a lot more people this year. Ooh, but you know what else she's gonna have this year? Sports Life Town, because we're gonna be there. She already invited us. It's gonna be in the DC area, right? It's gonna be in Baltimore, hey. right? Oh, yeah, for sure. And y'all gonna have, listen, I'm telling y'all, y'all think what, what I got for y'all, the people that you see that's coming, you're gonna be like, oh, yeah, we need her. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. Yeah, Man, for sure. we got big things coming. Well, DC, hide your aunties, because we are on our way. <laughs> All right, Megan. So this is a part of the show where you get a chance to call out the next person who should have next on our series. Tell them, hey, I got um, a chance to rock with B. Jones and KT. I told them my story. I want you to do the same. With that said, little sis, who are you giving your uh, game ball to? Um, I would give my game ball to Erica Wheeler. Okay. Erica Wheeler, she plays for the Sparks. Oh, uh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. She has a story that is to the point where I can't even begin to explain as far as undrafted. She was the MVP of the all-star game in the WNBA. That's right. I've seen that. So she, I think her story will magnify and carry on to everything else that y'all want to do with this. For sure. Oh man. Well, Erica Wheeler. Hey, hold up, B. Jones. She said she had two. We ain't gonna literally. Oh, I do have two. Okay. I, have two. I got one more. Isabel Harrison, my teammate, my college Isabel. teammate. Dallas Wings, she is Izzy. a mm-hmm. fashionista. Yes. She is the she is my idea of class. The epitome. Dignity. Yeah, listen, and dignity, oh, just all around. Them two right there, you got the best of both worlds. Man, she's my favorite uh, uh Dallas uh Dallas Wing for show. Sure. All right, oh, yeah. so Isabel, Izzy. And Erica Wheeler, you officially on the clock. Y'all will be hearing from us soon. We're going to do our best to try to get y'all on here because we will appreciate it. But hey, Megan, Speedy, Simmons, Tufo, you <laughs> rock that Kobe proudly. You, hey, you've been a blessing. We want to thank you for coming by the show. Your future super bright. I can't wait to see you as a mom. I can't wait to see you as a coach. Anything you need, you got two brothers right here that will rock alongside of you. And guess what? Megan Simmons, you got next. Sports Life Talk Nation. I say it every time, and I'm going to keep saying it. Boom. Oop. Now you say, oops. Oops, we did it again. You say, boom. <laughs> we did it again. We are back at it like crack addicts. We told y'all this thing. We weren't playing with y'all. Stop playing with me. Start praying with me. Because right. this thing ain't going to stop. We're going to keep giving y'all something. We're going to move the culture and we're going to shift the focus. That's what this show is all about. For and sure. that was an amazing story. I still got your chills. I, I don't know. I, I don't even know how I'm going to turn this one off. <laughs> I, I, I don't know how I'm going to turn this one off. I don't know how you're going to turn it off. But if you're in the gym in your car, I don't know. Wherever you're watching this, I hope you enjoy that. Listen, take some time out. Don't forget to show us some love uh leave us a lot leave us a comment tell us what you thought about megan her story a top five don't forget to check kevin and i out monday night excuse me wednesday nights at eight o'clock p.m central standard time we stream on youtube facebook uh twitter i'm, I'm just a little sh- I mean, hey, she said izzy and erica kevin i'm, I'm, I'm just yeah, showing yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i don't I gotta even give know. y'all good people hey i, I don't even know what to people. say for the rest of the show but check this out if you are if you are watching this and you want to get some free slt gear kevin and i'll make it our point to give back this year so go to our ig page at sports life talk uh, tag in five friends that's all we take just tag in five friends we're trying to grow we want you to share it and uh we're gonna give you a free sports life talk t-shirt so just leave us with your name your address 
and all of that good stuff. We're gonna shoot it out to you. But Kev, man, that was fun, bro. That was that's what this like like that that was amazing. Akila, we love you, Akila. Thank yeah. you so much. Well, <laughs> Megan, thank you so much. You're in, see when people are bring that energy like that, it makes us right. even better. So we really appreciate you. Whatever yeah, you need from us, minus money, we got you, sis. So I got you. I appreciate y'all. All right, Sports Life Talk Nation. Man, woo! We love y'all. Stay safe. Be blessed. Respect each other and love one another because together we are better and keep dreaming big. Because in my tearful finish, you never know. You may be the next one featured on Sports Life Talks. You got next. Yeet! See what's crazy is I knew you had next because you always working, you always grinding, you're in your bag because you're always working. Like in due time, I just I knew you got next. Oh, you did it, huh? Crack the code. You got next, you smashing goals. You want next, you need exposure. Well, sports like talk, got the baddest show, like the baddest hut in the room. Podcast is tuning to just for you to talk your shit. Talk your mushroom, you want what you eat and you should consume. Sports like talk from the late night to the afternoon, then rest repeat. Hit the like, leave a comment, or subscribe so you don't miss a beat. You got next, just a small taste of a winning meal from a chef type of celebrity. What's up next is you, at least you better be. Yeah, you got next, yeah. You can feel it, oh. Just like me, you got next, and what comes next? Tune in next time, and you'll see. Cause if you got next, yeah, if you got next, if you got next, they all just like me.